I mean, who needs a hero power anyway? What's good, nerds? Sick of this patch yet? Samesies, my peeps. But I will say, getting first places without elementals is very satisfying. Especially when you're on the elemental hero, Shenvala. His zero power is Avalanche. After you play three elementals, reduce the cost of upgrading Bob's Tavern by three. When he first was introduced into the battleground, his hero power was only a reduction of two. And to no one's surprise, he was a terrible hero. But they buffed him to where now the reduction sits at three, and that makes him a bit more viable. He's still a mid-tier hero, falling into that C-tier category, similar power levels to an Alex Draza or an Edwin, but as of now, he fits well into this meta. This is a very fast-paced, high rolly type meta, where you want to be power leveling and finding win condition minions like Bran, Baron, Lil Rag, Nomi, all those kinds of things. So if you can get some elementals in the beginning, get off to a fast start, this allows you to power level and find those high impact cards earlier than the rest of the lobby. Typically strong starts with Shemvala include multiple Selementals. Keep in mind overall you receive a total of two Elementals from Selemental, so this one minion actually gets you two thirds of the way to activating your hero power and ultimately getting that three gold reduction when upgrading to the next tavern tier. Early game Selemental is a very strong minion, but then when you pair it with Shenvala, you can get off to a blistering fast start. So what's the game plan with Shenvala? Well, we pretty much covered it already. It's nothing too complex. You want to be buying Elementals early, specifically targeting Selementals with the goal of reducing your tavern upgrades to then power level and look for those win condition minions. But as you can see, that's not happening for us. So we pick up the pirates, really just trying to be as strong as possible here. Hopefully in the coming turns, we can find a few good elementals like party elemental and selemental. God, I'm so sick of saying the word elemental already. To start to get value from our hero power. Or we can just pick up the pairs of spawns and bask in the warm embrace of the battlegrounds gods. I then also freeze for the free dealing gambler here. Worst case scenario, I pick him up next turn, then level, put him on my board, it'll be a 4-4. Four, four. We are pretty strong here. We just beat Alakir, who is a very strong early game hero, and we've gotten zero value from a hero power up until this point. And then here we just level and pick up the South Sea pair over the Gambler. Who's still picking Galakrond nowadays? Someone's going for the memes. And there's our spawn triple. Decision time though, do we level and freeze? Or do we just grab it right now and discover a four drop? Yeah, we just level here. I think it's always the right decision. We're still pretty strong, even without improving our board state here. So we should either be able to tie or win this fight, or very worst case scenario, take pretty minimal damage. Rag spawn running himself into our alley cat here is really good for us.
So we lose the fight, but that's fine. We're taking seven damage. We're still above 30 health, and now we'll be able to grab our triple and discover our tier five minion. Obviously we're looking for a genie there, but we're pretty happy with a Baron to pair with our golden spawn. And then on to grabbing some stronger minions to improve our board state. So we grab the Cobalt and then roll and pick up an egg. And now on turn seven, we have a very strong board. Two pretty powerful Tavern 4 minions, and then a Baron paired with a Golden Spawn. And don't forget about our South Sea pair. So next turn we can level, roll once, and hopefully hit a strong tier five minion, or roll into our triple. Oh great, Spawn is a proc, F me, right? Oh, thanks. So I guess we should talk a little bit why I want to level here. Really the only things I'd be looking for on Tavern 4 are things like Anoya modules and more eggs. So I'd rather go to Tavern 5 and try to find my triple or find those wing condition minions like a brand. So here we roll into the triple, which is fantastic. And then some fairly interesting choices, Caligos, Goldrin, and Full Reaper. Full Reaper would provide the most immediate impact and help on my board. Goldrin is very good because it can pair with my Baron, but I don't have any beasts and I need to find some very specific beasts. I would be looking for like Macaws, Hydras, Mama Bears, those kinds of things to pair with the Goldrin. So I actually decided to just grab the Caligos. It's a pretty big statted minion, so it'll help me right off the bat. But I also have a dragon on my board already, and now I have a win condition to where I can just start buying battle cries and pick up a few other dragons to start to scale my board and stabilize to the point where then I can level to Tavern 6 and look for things like Nadina or even another Caligos. Man, that full reaper decimated us. We were actually lucky to only take 13 here. So now I just want to find some dragons to put on my board as well as start to pick up some buff cards. I actually kind of want to prioritize dragons a little bit more than buff cards at the moment. But then you just pull a total recall and get three jugs. Little bit of a decision here though, I have to play a minion down and I have to sell off two of my stronger units. So I ditched the spawn and the baron. I couldn't really sell the spawn and the egg and keep the baron, it would get absolutely no value. So instead I decided to ditch the spawn and the baron and keep the egg since that's really the most impactful unit on my board. And really the main reason I'm keeping the egg here is in hopes of finding an annoying module in the coming turns. Second Caligos? Sure. What? Don't look at me like that, like you've never high rolled in the game before? I am worried about just living here though. We're facing Deathwing who's the first place to currently in the lobby. I'm already down to 18 health. Clench the butts, cross the fingers boys. And in typical Deathwing fashion, they have no stats on their board. And we're now at the stage of the game where their death rattles don't have enough value to win fights against large statted minions like I have. So we win the fight. It was close, but we win. And now on to cycling some battle cries. Get ready for some high octane gameplay. And you're probably noticing me rolling past battle cry minions. So I still have two open spots on my board that I want to fill with dragons. So my first priority is actually to find some battle cry minions to fill up those spots. But we do end up rolling into a brand that's a really good pairing with our Tavern Tempest. And then at long last on turn 10, we finally get value from our hero power. Great shop to end on and freeze here. 
two battle cries, a strong shell, but more importantly, the Murazant. Ooh, and look at Lich's board. Three prime targets for the Murazan battle cry. Bronze Warden and the Razor Gore. Yeah, it's just kind of one of those games. Board locked here, though, so we bid adieu to our friend Bran. Tip your caps to him, boys. They look more value from the hero power. It's incredible. Have enough gold left over to where we can level a Tavern 6, and now we're really just looking for a Nadino. Rag. Battle cries, more battle cries, and more battle cries. I think about freezing for the Argus so I can taunt up my Bronze Warden, but figure it's better to just roll. I have two pairs on my board, plus I'm still looking for a Nadina, so I decide to not freeze the shop since there's nothing else in it that I want. Home was pretty strong. That Gar is intimidating, plus two big cleaves. The question is, who can outstat who in the coming turns? Sure, grab the triple. Should have played the battle cry first, though. And we grab the gas coiler, and it's for a few different reasons. The first and most apparent one is that we can give it taunt with the hound master that's in the shop. It's always good to have at least one taunt on your board to protect yourself against cleaves, and we know Omu has two big cleaves. But there's also a chance that it can spawn Nadina from its death rattle, which will give me the edge in any fight. Okay, up against Deathwing here. I'm not sure how he even made it this far. He's probably just happy to place third at this point. He was really weak the last time we fought. And okay, I guess a pair of Amalgadons will do it for you, huh? but we just overpower him with our stats and take him out. Final boss time. Nice 
I do roll past some battle cries here. I'm really looking for high impact cards. Things like obviously Nadina, but also things like Amalgadon, and I also still have a pair on my board, so I could triple that. But Murzon's also a good find, especially since Deathwing had two Amalgadons on his board last turn. So it's a battle cry, plus it has a chance to discover a really high impact tier 6 minion. Man, that Gar is huge, 163 health. And our dragons are just too chunky of boys and we end up winning the fight, but we don't take him out. So there's a few things in this next buy phase that I'll be looking to prioritize. Oh, there's one of them, poison. And I end up grabbing the second poison as well. My thought process is if I can find an Argus, I can then taunt the Bronze Warden and throw away the Gas Coiler. Or if I can find the triple for my Caligos, I can throw that onto the board as my final minion. And I think about the selfless hero, I'm actually pondering if I should just throw away the gas coiler completely right now. Decide against it though and throw the Myax on our board and this will be our final board state. And look, Omu has a much improved board from last time. Two poisons that weren't there before. But what did I tell you guys? There's the Nadina. And boom, perfect attack from his Hydra. Now all of my dragons have Divine Shield. That's the fight right there. And before you start sounding off in the comments saying that was a huge high roll, even without that super high roll, I still had a 73% chance to win that fight. So I guess in a matter where elementals are king and minions like Lil Rag, Nomi, and Bran is typically how you win, it's still possible to grab some wins by being a pair gamer. We definitely didn't play to the strength of our hero power, but in my defense, we really didn't have the opportunity to. Instead, we followed the first rule of the battleground, taking what Bob offers picking up pairs and aggressively leveling to find high impact and win condition cards. But that'll do it for me. Until next time, Godspeed nerds.